Hi, I'm Nazar from The Upcoming. <laughs> nice Hi. to meet you. You too. So congratulations on this fantastic third season of Godfather of Harlem. Brilliant. <laughs> so perhaps I could start. I mean, obviously, I think the end of season two and then running into the start of season three, we start, you know, seeing the riots of Harlem that sort of span over three days and that kind of conflict. So what can viewers kind of expect from the storylines as we go into season three? Well, there are a couple of uh, wrinkles to explore. Um, <clears throat> first of all, on the, you know, we often look at the show as being the com the collision of crime and civil rights, and so what usually guides the season is is sort of a, a an overarching crime story and an overarching civil rights story that have, you know, points of intersection. So in season three, what we see on the crime story side is that Bumpy Johnson is faced with a new uh, enemy in Joe Colombo who has recently been um, raised, elevated to the head of his own family, and who uh, is ruthless, a ruthless individual who, who, who seeks to put Bumpy in his place, and that, that is going to create problems for everybody. Um, also, as part of the crime story is, you know, Last year in season two, we explored the French connection and Bumpy's attempt to get heroin from Corsica. In um, in in this season, we explore the Cuban connection in the form of a real life gangster named Jose Battle, who operated in New York and New Jersey, and who will form an interesting part of the triangle between Bumpy, the Italians, and 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 then we have the Cubans. And 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 that could shift the balance of power in Harlem. What we're really trying to explore underneath it from a civil rights aspect is, first of all, the uh, movement of Malcolm X into a, an international figure of acclaim, uh, a movement of Malcolm X into someone who is now speaking much more aggressively about violent revolution in the streets, which of course makes him a marked man, uh, and, and, and Bumpy's efforts to protect Malcolm as Malcolm goes deeper into the, the um, you know, the, the, the dangerous part of his political career. Uh, so, you know, what you have is you have the Cuban connection on the crime side and and who who's going to, uh, you, I, th I think through that story, what we're exploring is the idea that the marginalized groups in Harlem, in this case, the Latins and the Blacks, are they going to pair together and overlook their 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 own um, points of points of conflict in order to team to fight against a, a, a more powerful enemy, or will will their own internal issues prevent them from uh, forming a, a an alliance that can that can challenge the Italians? So that'll happen on the crime story side, <clears throat> and on the Malcolm's side, like I said, he he starts to now be invited to travel to foreign countries. So we we set an episode or two in uh, in Egypt and in in um, uh, 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 Saudi Arabia, um, and and so so we're, we're we're exploring the international travels that that Malcolm undertook, and then of course when he returns to the United States. The, the enormous amount of danger that he faced because the U.S. government now had him in in their sights as a as a real agitator for change, which is something they did not want. So we're going to watch as these strands all come together and hopefully build to a rousing you know conclusion <laughs> for the season. Um, but we always have fun doing it. We're, we're very proud of this season. We think it, 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 in some ways, it came together very, very nicely. And, um, and as usual, Forrest is brilliant. Our new actor, Michael Raymond James, who's playing Joe Colombo, is a is a force to be reckoned with. Um, and and of course, uh, Yul Vasquez, who plays Jose Battle, the Cuban. Is uh, is is he was in Severance and a million other movies, and so he he's wonderful as well. So as usual, we're blessed with these incredible actors. They're they're so, you know, they they turn even average words into something brilliant. So 
I'm very I'm I'm proud of the season. Well, oh, not surprised. <laughs> um, I mean, you've got a different actor, Jason Allen Carvel, stepping into the role of playing Malcolm, Malcolm X this season after um, Miguel Fat. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, who <laughs> played in the first two seasons. Can you talk about kind of that replacement and how you felt working with him as he kind of took over this role? I mean, it's kind of quite big boots to fill, isn't it, really? Absolutely. I mean, first of all, it'd be very, be, be very hard pressed to find uh, someone who performed the role of Malcolm better than Nigel did in those first two seasons. But what we had was with all the uh, shifting dynamics of COVID and we, we, it ended up being a kind of scheduling issue. And, and so we were forced to recast, which is something you obviously don't want to do. Um, and Jason, I think, it's very interesting because Jason does a magnificent job this year as well. And it, but it's a different tonal register. You know, the, the two men, the two men bring something different to the table. I think viewers will find, uh, especially if they have a little patience with, with the fact that it's a new person filling the shoes, if they give it a couple of episodes, they'll see uh, Jason's warmth in the role and his, you know, excellence as an actor. I, I guess I'd have to say this. I, we were blessed if you if you had to make such a switch because of scheduling or any other reason um we're, we're really thankful that we found two men over the course of these three seasons who fill the shoes so capably they're, they're both excellent and you know can you talk about that relationship that malcolm x has with bumpy johnson in this season as it moves along how does that kind of develop and change this season that's a great question. I, I think that, you know, first of all, in real life at about this time, late 64 and, and early 65, uh, you know, Malcolm was now, um, uh, first of all, traveling internationally, as we said, he he's gaining more and more and more uh, 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 power, as it were. He's, ga he's, he's clearly um, uh, merited the attention of the United States government. And so the danger to him is escalating week by week, month by month. And 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 Bumpy's quite aware of that. And and also Bumpy's daughter is has taken a role within Malcolm's organization where he's and this is true of Malcolm in real life. He really gave women like positions of of high um import in his organization. And and so uh we're we're sort of taking real life people and compositing them into our character Elise but she she ends up uh, uh becoming a, a vital part of his organization which of course causes Bumpy even more um agitation because not only is is his friend Malcolm courting assassination but his daughter is in that line of fire as well and so we're, we'll see as the season progresses Bumpy becoming more and more concerned about this and even taking direct steps in action to to protect Malcolm uh you know leading to a, a season ending conclusion and obviously like you mentioned you take Malcolm X further afield you take him to Mecca you take him to Egypt uh, and then you know Africa and I think we really get to delve a little bit more into his character um we see a little bit more of him actually um and but also his life then is ultimately in danger as well can you talk about those storylines for him in this season how true are they to kind of his real life as well well i think that you know we're, we're we're not privileged to have been flies on the wall listening to exactly what people were saying that said there is so much that malcolm himself wrote in his autobiography about his experiences and obviously a lot was written about him far more about him than bumpy johnson and so we're often forced to create what we imagine the dialogue would have been between bumpy and malcolm and i think that what we seek to do is um, we seek to capture the spirit of the truth so that what, what happened for Malcolm was, I think that there was a kind of resignation in the latter, in the last year of his life, that, that he was, that he was not long for this earth. And I think he understood the implications of, of, of his, um, radical position. He, he, he knew that that was going to be potentially um, extremely dangerous to him and his family. And so 
we we lean into that this year. We we try our best to sort of convey the spirit of the truth, if not the documentary reality of it. So I think what you'll see in this year is a Malcolm who has thrown caution to the wind, who is extremely frustrated with the lack of progress of the civil rights movement, and and who is is willing to face death to to you know to to speak out. And obviously also we we dig again deep into the character of Bumpy Johnson too in this. And he reaches out further afield and creates ties with the Cuban mafia, like you said. Um was that kind of fun to take the drama a little bit further afield in this season? <laughs> well, we have to because because it, it, almost on a conceptual level, if the first season was establishing Bumpy's relationship with Malcolm and his war against the Italians, the second season was the French connection coming in to, you know, affect the drug dealing in the in the. Um, in the community, just as the community was becoming a powder keg of dissatisfaction and about to explode, which it does at the end of the second season. And then in the third season here, we're exploring the idea that Bumpy is seeking, um, you know, with the Cubans, he he's, th this is an examination of whether a Latin alliance can, can occur with a Black alliance in order to fight a larger, um, you know, enemy, as it were. So, in other words, can can disenfranchised groups of different stripes with different uh, attitudes, with different goals, can they work together against a, a common enemy? And that's that's what we explore in in this season. But, um, you know, I, I think what we try to do is we try to explore the idea of can disenfranchised citizen groups band together to achieve common goals, or is that impossible? You know, and 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 you shall see as you watch. I think, you know, we've got great, great stuff in the political arena with Malcolm and Bumpy and and Bumpy's daughter Elise, and and we also have um, very you know gripping stuff in the. Um, on the crime side of things, not the least of which is, you know, an attempt by uh, Cubans to um, uh, to assassinate Che Guevara at the United Nations in, in 1964. And so we depict that in the show. So, so we're building to very, very big, um, you know, events uh, toward the end of the season. And I think like you said about Malcolm X, depicting women himself is quite strong. You definitely do in this season as well. You know, they're strong, they're fierce. And, you know, given the era that it's in, you've done a brilliant job of bringing that female strength onto the screen. Was that kind of intentional for you? Well, I'll tell you this. It's it's fu it's funny you should say that. Um, if you told me that the women um, actors on this show and the, uh, would, be, would first of all would be so strong and would be so prominent in the storytelling i would have said to you at the beginning i don't know how we're going to do that this is a gangster show you know the, and, but 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 in point of fact one of the interesting things is in the italian criminal underworld women are completely kept out of it whereas in both the latin and the black criminal underworld women are oftentimes essential linchpins and 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 oftentimes the brains behind the operation and so we leaned into that a little bit and and i i've i've been very very uh pleased and amazed that we've been able to give the women on the show such meaty roles that i wasn't anticipating being able to do when we started but but they're you know and and of course the actresses um um uh, Antoinette Crow Legacy, who plays Elise, and Ilfanesh Hadera, who plays Mamie. They're, they're so wonderful. And 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 of course, uh, uh Lucy Fry, who plays Stella, uh Crazy Stella, you know, uh, is is uh is also a, a pleasure to deal with. So so yeah, we have we have great plans for her this season too. And obviously work with Boris Whitaker on this all the way through. I mean, he's obviously amazing, clearly. <laughs> but you've also got some really cool newcomers as well. Like you said, you've got uh, Yul Banquet, who I believe you work on as well in Hotel Cocaine. <laughs> um, and you've also got Wiki Goldberg. What was that like bringing these newcomers in and bringing, you know, kind of extending that brilliant ensemble cast? Well, 
it, first of all, we're we're so lucky to have actors of this caliber who are 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 part of this. Whoopi is a special case scenario because one of our producers told me, "Oh, Whoopi just loves the show," and I said, "Oh, that's fantastic." And you know, do you, and the producer said, "Do you want me to ask her if she would be a part of it?" And I said, "Well, we we don't have the money to pay pay her." And, and he said, "Well, let me ask anyway." And so Whoopi just said, "You know what? Let's not worry about." Let's not worry about the fees too much. You know, it's, you know, the, 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 I I want to be a part of it. And so she's obviously very busy with the View and all of her other things. But she is just a, such a special person, and she comes in and she plays Bumpy's, you know, a, a, you know, a numbers cruncher, and and so watching her and Forrest work is is just a dream. She's sort of doing it for the love of the game and for the. <laughs> the show and so we're we're grateful to her for that and every time she does her 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 work you know we're, we're extremely thankful she oh just call me next time you want me you know she's very very um amenable to to coming back and being a part of it and so you know there, there's nothing um more gratifying than when you have an actor uh, an actress of that caliber you know just w wanting to be a part of it because of the the, the actor she gets to bounce off of and 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 frankly it's really not about business for her it's about just just being part of something that she feels is special well oh, that's so cool and obviously crime i mean you're not you know you, you've worked with narcos a few crime series it's you know it's a really big draw for people but you know this has got a lot of gore in it a lot of blood a lot of violence a lot of action did you ever think, God, I pushed it too much when you're in post-production? Because <laughs> even me watching some of those scenes, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, yes, I, I, I guess so. You know, so, so, sometimes in when I see the when I see it at the end of the day, I say, wow, that was pretty violent. Um, You know, it's part and parcel of a gangster series. I, I have a new show coming, Hotel Cocaine, which is uh, set in 70s Miami. And and that that. uh has uh you know that also has its share of violence and 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 also some comedy in it as well and i think that godfather of harlem has moments of of sort of black comedy or humor um yeah it's it's interesting i i i'm sensitive to presenting violence on screen and not wanting it to be an advertisement for violence and i i, I at the same time i think that you know I, I like to write what I like to watch. So I, I love shows like this. A lot of people do. And uh, and and I think we also try to always reflect on the fact that the violence does not come without a cost. You know, Bumpy Johnson is is affected slowly but surely over the course of this season and these three seasons with the uh, effects of his actions. He has in season three some very, very uh, bitter disputes with his wife, who is pursuing more legitimate means of um, improving the lot of blacks in Harlem, and and Bumpy's criminal endeavors actually work as a counter to that. They 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 potentially tarnish her, and so we start to see fissures in their relationship develop. So again, I think this. Uh, uh, I, I I do I I think we try to uh, deal with the violence in the show as a uh, you know it's part and parcel of the of the genre and at the same time we try not to make it just violence for violence sake it's we're, we're trying to show the um bumpy's movement to a place a, a time at which he's going to renounce um uh the the criminal life or, or renounce drug dealings somewhere down the line and when the viewers get tired of, of the show. <laughs> and what do you hope that viewers will take away from this? Well, a couple of things. I think it's important for viewers to enjoy the experience. Uh, we're not trying to do a documentary or a history lesson per se, but I do think that what's, what, what I would love viewers to take away is a couple of things. The first is that at crime, it's very easy to just look at crime criminals as criminals and paint them with a black brush, so to speak. Crime uh, occurs in the absence of opportunity. 
And so that if you look at other immigrant groups in the United States, the Irish, the Italians, the Germans, et cetera, there's all criminal underworlds involved in those immigrations to the country until those groups could make themselves relevant within the more legitimate, you know, uh, uh, ways to make a living and so so that we're trying to explore crime as a as a as a in some ways we're pairing it with civil rights because because the two don't seem like they belong in the same sense but we're trying to explore how extra legal means are necessary at when a when a when a second class citizen group is trying to make its way in america and america you know, it's said every great fortune in America is built on a great crime. So um, from the Rockefellers on down. So, you know, I think that we're trying to look at look at these things in a nuanced way. Uh, we're not trying to say that Bumpy Johnson is correct for dealing heroin. In fact, in season three, he gets more thrown in his face about the about his profession than it than in any other previous season we don't advocate the sale of heroin um and and he's obviously causing huge wreckage in his own community and so what we'll watch as the seasons evolve is the we've always viewed the show as the education of bumpy johnson it's slow but sure and there'll be there'll come a point at which all of this illegality that he's involved in may 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 force a change in his character that's profound oh thank you so much for speaking to me i think we're out of time so thank you so much what an insight lovely i uh, hope viewers love it as much as i do and i'm sure they will <laughs> I, I i i hope so too thank you so much for taking the time i appreciate oh, it thank you very much thank you lovely to meet you bye bye <laughs>